Welcome to Bayer's Crop Focus podcast, where we discuss the very latest in crop advice, sustainability, smart farming, and everything in between. In this episode, Mike Abram from our communications team catches up with Andrew Williamson, one of our Blackgrass Task Force farmers. For Andrew, a perfect storm of almost continuous rain and slug pressure during the winter has meant that while 80% of his winter wheat has been drilled, none of it is likely to be harvested. Andrew and Mike discuss how this will impact the spring cropping area and weed control. In addition, Andrew also updates Mike on the status of a cover crop drilled to help better establish the following spring oats crop. So I'm Mike Abram, I'm PR and social media manager from Bayer. Um, Today I'm with Andrew Williamson who is a farmer in Shropshire and he hosts um, our Blackgrass Task Force in Action trial. Um, Andrew, thanks for um, allowing us to come and talk to you today. What I wanted to just start with was um, see how you've actually got on with drilling, because obviously this autumn has been such a nightmare for for many farmers. How have you coped? So we've had a fairly torrid time with regard to drilling for a garb. So we've managed to establish our oilseed rape in in reasonable conditions, and then uh, we waited and waited for a while for various reasons to control grass weeds, and also because through the lack of losing to turf, so B by DV control, so we purposely delayed when we want to drill, and we ended up drilling probably a month later than we would ideally like to, uh, when we finally got an opportunity in some drier weather. And we managed to establish probably about 80% of our uh, also of our wheat area in two or three days, in a window around about the 18th of October, and kept having hope that that would come through. It went into reasonable conditions, but... As the winter progressed and the fact that we got more and more rain continually, we, uh, we've now come to the point where we don't think we're going to harvest any of that wheat. Wow. So that's a little bit different to what a lot of other farmers have experienced this autumn by actually they've not been able to drill. But you managed to get your wheat in, but it's, it hasn't come through. Why was that? Uh, probably a few different factors. One thing, we're, we're on the road of trying to convert to conservation agriculture and we're doing more direct drilling. We're in the second year this year. Last year went fantastically well, but it was a dry season last year. This year's completely different. So we were able to travel on land because it we just wasn't touched. We hadn't, it wasn't as if we'd worked a uh, seabed up and then that got wet. So that helped us to get across the land to, to drill. And also we left some quite a bit of residue on the surface, which also helped to carry the machinery. But then the downside of that is um, when we had continual rainfall, the water just wasn't getting away and the drainage wasn't working. And we just sat in sort of an anaerobic situation, the top couple of inches, and just sort of, even though it chitted and started to grow, it just kept imbibing more and more water and basically drowned. And did you have problems with pests as well? Yeah, we've had a, equally on top of that, we've also had a massive pressure from slugs across all crops, from obviously rape to oats to to um, wheat and uh, some of that was um, I wouldn't say self-inflicted but it was we had quite a big pressures from slugs a lot of our wheat was following all seed rape and we purposely left the previous year's all seed rape volunteers in an attempt to try and attract away uh, flea beetle from the all seed rape we established this year and therefore we ended up with big canopies of rape which are absolutely stuffed full with slugs and then you try and drill some wheat into those afterwards and the, the pressure from the slugs was like nothing I've ever seen and we've probably put um, three to four applications of ferric phosphate onto the wheat and if it did manage to get out of the ground and escape the water it just got eaten by a slug so we've had huge huge pressure. So what, what does that mean for your cropping area? Will you re-drill that? What with? Uh, currently, as we sit here today, and on another wet, miserable day, uh, I don't think I'm going to plant much. But if it comes out sunny tomorrow, then I might have to be a bit more optimistic. So, our our aim is to still try and redrill some of that wheat area with wheat, but we will not attempt to drill any more wheat into the ground that's fallen all seed rape. We'll try and redrill some, maybe some other fields which are destined to go to spring cropping because we're late and nice. We've we'll gain from our grass weed control strategy, and also we'll follow into the, following the beans as well. And I'm quite comfortable with certain varieties we can drill up until the end of February, possibly into March. So there is time yet, and at this time of year things can change quite quickly. So I keep hoping that we'll be able to get some wheat in the ground. 
Well, fingers crossed. If we just turn to the, the field where we've got the black grass trial, when we talked back in the summer, the plan was that we would, um, that that would have a cover crop um, planted on most of it and then be a corner which you'd take out of production to put into Lucerne. Um, how have you managed with with that? Did the cover crop get in? Is the lucerne planted? But what, what have you actually managed to achieve, given it's been such an incredibly difficult autumn? Well, there's a there's a common thread here. We managed to plant it all. Like we did plant the wheat. The cover crop we didn't plant till about the 29th of August, so quite late. And it is critical the the time when you plant cover crops in, in our part of the world in the in the western side of the country in Shropshire because you day length reduces and everything else and and you don't get the same cover crop that you plant in September as you do in the middle of August. And in particular this season, it was quite cold, quite slow. So we planted the cover crop uh, with a mix of phacelia, buckwheat and vetch, and we mixed them with that some spring beans. Essentially, the spring beans came, but nothing, nothing else has. And there's a decent, there's a, a scattering of them. It's not massive, it's not one of, a huge biomass crop, but it's the beans are there growing, they're, they're nodulating, they're fixing a bit of nitrogen, we might get some benefit going forward. We did also manage to drill the lucerne in the one corner, but again that was planted in unideal conditions, probably later than it should have done. And that was purely driven by the availability in the land free, because the harvest was late, harvest was pressured because of the, of the weather and everything else. And you have to sort of prioritise certain things and you can't go off leaving the combine to go and plant a corner of lucerne. But I think we'll have to redrill that in the spring. And that's okay to redrill in the, the spring. I don't know much about lucerne, I have to say. So no, well that makes two of us, <laughs> but we'll give it a go. Um, but yeah, I think so. I don't see why it shouldn't be. It's a, it's it's a grass, so I don't see why it shouldn't be a problem to be able to grow plant in the spring. And the the cover crop, what's the plans for that? It, it's there's not a great big population of, of cover there, as you say. So when will you look to destroy it, or will you drill direct into it with the with the spring oats that's going to follow? I think we'll, because of the sparsity of the population, we'll be able to drill straight into it because it's not going to be, there's not a thick enough canopy there to uh, prevent the surface of the soil drying off and getting light and wind to it because it's, it's thin. So I think we'll leave the beans for as long as possible and, uh, and then either drill it straight off soon before we drill it or even afterwards when we've been through it and when we go through with it with a pre M on there. And... What do you think the benefit of that cover crop has been? Has it been as kind of well? Has it done what you think it should have done? Has it? Well, no, it hasn't done what I would hope to do because it hasn't established in the way I'd hope to do. Because obviously we would have expected the buckwheat and the facelia and the vetch to have gotten established. Buckwheat in particular is very quick to establish in the autumn, and it's it's known as a, a good phosphate scavenger. So we would have scavenged some phosphate from there. The facility has got a very uh, fine root structure in the in the A horizon, the soils are in the, in the very le- first level of soil, so that would have been, I mean, not getting that benefit. The beans have done what the beans are doing, and, and so it's it's a bit of a disappointment, but it's not a total disaster. And do you, given that, do you, do you think that it will have helped in terms of the aim of helping you establish the spring oak crop a little bit more easily or, or anything along those lines or is it probably not going to have made enough of a difference it may have made a bit of a difference but I don't think it make a huge difference because I don't think the canopy is there so if you think about the benefits of having a, a large canopy to traffic over and sort of rather than getting fo- direct contact with the soil you haven't got enough there for that um, but the, I guess the other benefit from not having a thick canopy is there's been no suppression of any black grass growing there so any black grass would have germinated so that's that's a benefit because we the ultimate, we don't want to be planting a, a cover crop which is then going to uh, be detrimental to the growth of the black grass in the period when we can take it out with glyphosate. Because the whole reason why it's going for a spring crop is because we want to try and control grass weeds. So any cover crop that then is, is detrimental to that aim is, is not what we want to be. So we have to remember why that ground is available to grow a cover crop over the winter. And the main reason is because we're trying to control grass weeds. And... Just coming back to your um, problems establishing winter wheat, and obviously that's going to mean you're going to have much more effectively spring crop in the ground. Mm-hmm. Is that a silver lining then for you in terms of your grass weed control? Yeah, that is that is a positive of having so much spring crop in here, and because we know that probably the best way or the best way to control our grass weed numbers is through spring cropping. We would normally do between twenty five and thirty five percent, and this year we're going to be looking at probably about seventy. 
even more maybe depending on how many, if we can't get any more wheat in. So that is going to have a benefit on our, on our grassberry populations and hopefully that will help us um, going forward in the next few, few years. We've also got to be very careful that I want to be careful to keep the effect of autumn 2019 to crop in year 2020. I don't want it to ripple through for the next three or four years. I don't want to be... I'm, I think we may have to take the first loss and just accept that and move on rather than sort of compromising things for three or four years in the future. And so that when you um, establish spring barley, spring wheat, or whatever it is, uh, this spring, what kinds of things will you be doing for weed control? Uh, for weed control, we'll be, obviously we're keeping seed rates up to make sure we've got competition from the crop with the weed as well. And then we'll be, we'll be using some pre-emergence herbicides as well to keep on top of it. Thanks for joining us on Bayer's Crop Focus podcast. If you've enjoyed today's podcast and can't wait for the next one, visit our website for the very latest in crop advice, sustainability and smart farming.